Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. It's our final video of the week. It's Friday, February 9th. Happy Friday, everyone. We have some good things coming your way today. We're going to talk about Arm Holding, which jumped 50% yesterday, which was really, really impressive. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people have clicked on this video for that reason alone. But our real hope is that you come away happy learning a new thing about how the world works. Hopefully, that's our goal anyways, because we enjoyed, we really actually enjoyed putting this together. Or maybe I did. I'll speak for myself. (laughs) I really enjoyed it. It's a good video to wrap up the end of the week and to chew on over the weekend. But before we get to ARM stock and its meteoric NVIDIA-like rise yesterday, let's talk about air products and chemicals. That did not have the same success, actually far from it. But both of these companies fit into some very base ingredients in the semiconductor world. You see Arm Holding fits into that chip patents, very basic level of the semiconductor industry flow. And then also Air Products fits into that base materials portion of the semiconductor industry. So both of these companies, very integral to making semiconductors. Our hierarchy of of the economy chart uh, as well, from the old economy, traditional economy, based products, based materials, that's air products on the left, and then IP and patents. So let's essentially boil it down to what it is. It's data information, critical information companies need to design chips and the ultimate computing systems and software built atop of them. So that's ARM there on the digital economy pyramid. But both things coming from different parts of the economic hierarchy, but converging together to be really foundational, critical components of the chip industry. So that's why we have them bundled together today here, not just because they had divergent stock prices this week after earnings. Well, let's talk about why Air Products had such poor performance after their earnings call. Specifically, the CEO gave us some indications on what's actually going on in China, where Air Products sells much of their natural gas, hydrogen, and industrial gases. Yeah, due to some economic weakness and perhaps also some competitive headwinds, we'll talk about that in a moment, they decreased their full year fiscal 2024 guidance. Previously, at the midpoint, they were expecting about 13% growth in adjusted earnings per share, that's down to a range of 6% to 9%. Pretty simple, high-level stuff here. That's why the stock fell. You may remember that a previous video on Air Products, we talked about their CapEx spend, and they're currently spending an elevated amount of money in CapEx on property and equipment. Five to $5.5 billion in funding expected this year alone to get new liquid natural gas and hydrogen products up and running. They have a few. There's three big ones. There's the NEOM in Saudi Arabia for green and hydrogen facilities, a hydrogen complex in Louisiana for Gulf Coast industrial usage, and a sustainable airline fuel facility in Los Angeles. And none of those will be completed until around 2027. But this may sound very familiar to you. What does this remind us of, Nick? Yeah, as we've been talking a lot about Texas Instruments in the last year, ending its decade plus CapEx holiday, capital expenditures holiday that led to elevated free cash flow generation over that span of time. That CapEx holiday has already come to an end for Texas Instruments as well. And Air Products in a similar boat. For, for some of you longtime viewers, you may be wondering, well, you passed on TI because of this reason. Why air products and chemicals? Well, we see lots of options, lots of good alternatives to TI right now. But air products and systems is a leader in liquid natural gas equipment and process technology. A lot of that has some overlap with hydrogen infrastructure that's needed. And then, of course, we've got these industrial gases riding sidecar. They compete in that front with Lindy, ticker symbol L-I-N. But specifically, we were drawn to air products because of that LNG and hydrogen business. Here's the thing that's impacting them in China right now. It's helium. What in the world's going on with helium? And why would helium consumption in China 
tank this company. Sorry, that was a pun, unintentional. Yeah, when you think of helium, or at least when I think of helium, I think of kids balloons, but it's way more than that. Helium is actually obtained during oil and natural gas extraction, captured as a byproduct of fossil fuels in the form of methane or propane. The elemental gases are processed and then separated and sold. We know Air Products is a leader in natural gas equipment technology, pipelines, and various other production f- facilities and joint ventures. It's also a top distributor and supplier of helium. And this is where it gets interesting. Helium is actually a very important ingredient in all kinds of manufacturing and industrial processes. In fact, even in the semiconductor industry. Yeah, it, exactly. This is why this has been a chip stock investor favorite topic in the last year. We use this chart here a lot. This is from Applied Materials. Helium is used in all sorts of gas mixtures, chemical mixtures in the deposition and etch phases, including the lithography steps used to craft those transistors and other tiny features on silicon wafers. Deposition is the addition of chemicals to the surface of a silicon wafer and then etch uh, later the removing of those chemicals after the shapes have been made on the surface of that wafer. And so helium throughout this process, it's also an inert gas. It's one of the noble gases. So it it doesn't react chemically with these mixtures. So it's a great carrier when you're in the manufacturing process, trying to deliver that chemical to the silicon substrate. And then helium is also a great thermal conductor. So it's used to control the temperature of the wafers themselves, the chambers in the manufacturing equipment, so on and so forth. This stuff is used all throughout the electronics manufacturing process. And China, of course, is a big manufacturer of electronics, including, to an increasing degree, the semiconductors themselves. As you may recall from a few videos last year, we talked about China buying lots of semiconductor manufacturing equipment to bolster its own domestic chip making capabilities, and especially in the so-called mature node manufacturing, which is critical to industrial and automotive chips. Record numbers of manufacturing equipment was sent to China in 2023 from industrial giants like ASML, Holding, and Applied Materials. And as those semiconductors proliferated, helium prices have increased. Put very simply, this is classic supply and demand. Helium demand increased in China the last couple of years because of all that new semiconductor manufacturing equipment. But now, again, we'll reference that video that you just put the link to here, Casey. The install of new equipment is starting to moderate, starting to taper off. And so suddenly all that increased demand is moderating. And so the commodity price, helium in this case, is starting to fall. Air products' largest volume of helium sales go to China. So that declining helium demand off of the peak levels in 2023 is starting to falter. Yeah, so it looks like this is more than just normal seasonality here. So Air Products decided to factor this into its full year guidance and thus the downgrade in profit increases. Last year we added air products to our portfolio. With this drop, are we still looking at continuing to add to our position? Are we holding? Let's talk about valuation and where this puts us exactly. The thesis I think still remains intact, right? We bought this primarily for the LNG liquefaction equipment. A link here to some old articles we've written on that the emerging hydrogen energy industry. That's actually the core business. It's very healthy. Again, elevated CapEx, investing in those units. It's going to keep free cash flow in check. But Air Products is a leader in this space, leader in liquid natural gas, uh, emerging leader in hydrogen. And it's a profitable play on those, what what we think could be a long-term growth trend as a lot of companies look for more sources of renewable energy to fuel their enterprises. I think we'll start from there. Nothing's changed. That's the core business here. If you're looking for straight up industrial gases, that's Lindy, L-I-N. 
if you're looking for natural gas and hydrogen, a more solid bet on that, we think it's Air Products, APD. So nothing's changed. And so therefore, you mentioned we started buying this. It's a small position for us as of last year. If it's a dollar cost average, it would seem silly to stop now when we're in the midst of just what's a normal industrial business cycle for air products. And to boot, Nick, it's the cheapest it's been in years based on valuation numbers. It's 21 times trailing 12-month earnings per share and 15 times on a one-year forward basis on expected earnings. So you can see, looking at the stock chart, it peaked from 21 to 23, coincides with period of high inflation, and now it's dropped, like you said, 15% in just the last few days. It's as cheap as it's been in a long time. Yeah, you, the inflation trade is coming off the table here. So will this thing dip further? It could. It certainly, most certainly could. It's been an especially strong couple of years in 20, 2022 and 2023. This company does go through cycles every few years. You can see that here from the adjusted earnings growth rates over the last decade or so. They still average low teens percentage growth rate, 11% caker. And then along the way, healthy dividend increases as well, 9%. Kager growth on the dividend. Also, that dividend yielding 3.3% a year. We're not invested solely for the dividend, but it, it's a nice little sidecar to the overall thesis and the return of the stock. So yeah, helium, kind of a funny little detour here in our discussion of semiconductors, but that's what's going on. Fairly small business for air products, having an outsized impact on its profitability overall but we don't think that'll last for forever. We think this company is going to be just fine long-term. Fair enough. Let's talk now about Arm Holding, which had the exact opposite run in the market over the last day, up 50% since yesterday. And just as a quick recap, Arm Holding is in this IP and patent licensing segment of the semiconductor industry flowchart. Arm holding is another foundational component to the digital economy, but it's from an innovation side of the equation versus air products, which flows in from the base products and commodity side to supply the stuff needed to manufacture chips. Let's talk about the high level numbers for Q3 fiscal 2024, which is the period that ended in December 2023. Revenue for arm holding was $824 million which was up 14% year over year. Another key metric that we saw huge growth in was the trailing 12 months free cash flow up to 724 million, which is a 63% year over year increase. Yeah, much like we reviewed not all that long ago on Arm Holding, the free cash flow rebound is now here as the smartphone industry in particular makes a recovery. Just a reminder, ARM's claim to fame is its designs power all those Apple iPhones, the M-series MacBooks, also the Android smartphone ecosystem. This company is, for the moment, highly correlated to the smartphone industry, but they're aiming to change that. They want a bigger slice of the rest of the semiconductor industry too. As you may know, ARM-based chips starting to make some headway in the PC and specifically the laptop market, thanks to those M-series powered MacBooks from Apple, basically bringing everything people love about their iPhone onto their laptop experience. And companies like Qualcomm this year gearing up to do the same for the Microsoft Windows ecosystem. And then CEO Renee Haas talked about this on their earnings call. They think the fact that ARM is so fundamental to the whole semiconductor industry, they see many, many more billions of ARM-based chips filtering through the rest of the economy in all sorts of other mobile devices other than smartphones and laptops. Think smart home devices, industrial equipment, and of course, data centers right now with all of that AI infrastructure being installed. It uses up massive amounts of energy. And if you can use a more energy efficient chip, like one designed by ARM IP, uh, you, you're going to take that if it doesn't sacrifice 
computing performance. So Q3 was pretty solid, massive, near 50% jump in a day. Good. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, Casey. It's been an epic run since the IPO last autumn. So it's not just about the latest quarter, but it's about the forward guidance, right? Yes, absolutely. And if we are just beginning a new upcycle for the semiconductor industry and a new bull market fueled by chips and more infrastructure, I think all investors are betting that arms momentum is just going to last for quite a few years. And I think viewers will probably know that we have been rather critical of arms total access subscription tier in past analysis. But obviously, top designers are not feeling the same way, or at least they're very willing to pay a premium for the whole package. Arm signed five new total access contracts in the quarter, which brings them to a total of 27. And that's the end of the total access slow growth period. So Arm really showed us. <laughs> yeah, they, they did. They certainly did. Yet that total access is a little bit different from some of their older licenses where a company would pick and choose just what they needed. A lot of the top semiconductor design houses want access to the entire portfolio, not just an a la carte offering, as well as lots of support services and other ancillary services that feed into manufacturing, the ultimate software development that the chips are going to actually run and operate. So I think what we're seeing here, Casey, is more divide and conquer of the x86 duopoly, which is really just Intel's IP. And it's a duopoly because they've been licensing that to AMD for decades. x86 is going to stick around for a long while, but this is just yet another area where some old tech and old IP is sort of being divvied up and conquered. In this case, it's kind of a slow burn that's benefiting arm holding. I think this is a good time to talk about our total access to our Discord channel and all of our show notes. If you want to see all of our show notes and have access to our Discord channel, you can have total access by joining our membership here on YouTube or over on our Ko-fi page. Again, that's total access, just like Arm Holdings, total access except much more reasonably priced. Yes, and also like ARM, if you're not interested in a full-blown subscription, we do sell all of our show notes and industry manuals over on our Kofi shop page. So link to both of those things below in the description. Thanks for taking a look at that. We appreciate all of the support. Let's talk about AI because ultimately this is what it all comes down to right now, isn't it? Forward guidance was pretty good. They bumped up their expectation for earnings to close out the fiscal year. But ARM, <laughs> and just as like uh, it seems like every other management team in the tech space and even beyond the tech space these days, it seems like AI is getting waved around like some sort of magic wand. Again, a quote here from the CEO, Renee Haas talked about all sorts of new AI wins, like the new NVIDIA Grace Hopper chips, the new service Gemini, formerly known as Bard from Google, using ARM-based chips, the new Samsung Galaxy S24, lots of examples of this, lots of these things getting powered by some sort of ARM-based CPU. There's a few reasons why we are, we're not interested in ARM stock to begin with. The first, of course, is our rule that we do not purchase a stock within the first year of its IPO. That's generally a hard and fast rule. I know we've broken it a couple of times and it's not been super successful for us. So that's probably the biggest reason why we haven't purchased ARM stock. But the other reason has been the valuation. So Nick, tell me a little bit more about the valuation currently for ARM. On a full year, full fiscal year 2024 expected adjusted EPS basis, it trades for about 90x that outlook from management. And maybe that's just perfectly fine if you're eyeing the potential over the next five to 10 years. It, you know, this is a new bull market, and we think arm holding is going to be a solid growth business 
for a while. And again, rebounding profitability off of depressed financials last year in 2022 and 2023. Maybe if this rebound just continues, the valuation just automatically gets fixed all by itself, just simply from ARM getting a rebound from the smartphone market. That's the other reason I think ultimately it's the, the hard and fast rule that we have first and foremost, valuation second. And then third, Casey, SoftBank still owns over 90% of the stock. Yeah, I'm always worried that SoftBank is going to be like Intel and go to the pawn shop and sell some more stock to raise cash. That's always an, a worry in situations like this. If they do that, we think that a pullback could be in order, which may make us a little bit more interested in ARM. Yeah, we're just hypothesizing here on that. On the flip side of that, there is a short supply of ARM stock trading on the market right now, again, because SoftBank still owns over 90% of it. So that could be another reason that this thing shot up. It's at one point over 50% after hours when the company reported earnings. If you have too little supply for the demand, price goes up. Again, supply and demand basics here. I think we'll just leave it with to each their own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Could arm stock continue to rise higher from here? It sure could, especially in this market fueled by all sorts of investor craze around AI things. So we're not betting against arm at all, but we're still in wait and see mode. Again, we're probably going to just be sitting on our hands with this one until we reach the one-year anniversary of the IPO this autumn of 2024. So uh, I think we're happy to watch from the sidelines for now. Lots of semiconductor stocks out there that are rocking it. So we're fine. We're okay. But you may feel differently, and that's totally fine too. All right. I think that's a wrap for our final episode this week. We hope you have subscribed to the channel. And if you have not, make sure you do so and hit that notification bell so that you have alerts set for all of our new videos. Once again, we do have a membership available on YouTube and as well on our Kofi membership page. It's just $5 and you get access to all of our video show notes included, as well as access to our Discord channel where we discuss all things semiconductor and a little extra, including what we're buying and selling. Hope you all have a great weekend. We'll see you again next week at Chipstock Investor.